Hey everybody, welcome in. Garbage Time Sports, Joe Shad, Sam Stevenson, and tonight we are doing a pick-by-pick -pick series, a live fantasy football draft with Sam controlling six teams, me controlling six teams. We thought this would be the best way for us to talk about a whole bunch of players, talk about draft strategy, talk about why we pick, who we pick very quickly. We're going to try to get through a whole draft. Don't know if we will. We're going to go for an hour, maybe an hour 15, see how far we can get on this draft and try to talk about every player that we possibly can and get you ready for your draft. Our niche kind of here at Garbage Time Sports is that we talk about two QB leagues, all right? So this is going to be a two QB draft, three wide receivers, two running backs, a flex, and a tight end with a kicker and a DST, but we won't really talk about those. Those will be off screen. Those are the last two picks of the draft. If you don't know that your kicker and DST should be the last two picks of your draft, you are beyond our help here. Go find some sort of beginner, very first fantasy football tutorial sort of thing, which we don't have time to get to here tonight. I'm going to be sharing the screen here. We have a draft board up just done on Google Sheets. We know it's not high maintenance. We know it's not fancy. Please don't comment about how stupid it looks. We already know. All right. Sam, we're doing our, we're doing our best. Sam, two quarterback league. As I'm setting this up, would you like to give your quick thoughts on what you do in a two-quarterback league? Depends on my pick. We were just talking about this, and I think you and I somewhat have the same strategy here. If we're in the middle of a draft, I don't know how much I'm rushing to get quarterback. Quarterbacks f go off the board quickly in a two-quarterback league. They're usually the first guys taken, and you can see that by the ranking we have here. If you're pick, you know, seven, eight, even pick six or five, you... Personally, I think you're better off taking a Christian McCaffrey, taking a C.D. Lamb, someone like that, where you can stack up on position players that are a quality that some people later in the draft might not get. If you were to ask me if I'm getting C.D. Lamb or Anthony Richardson, it's close, to be fair, like, totally honest. But I have less questions about C.D. Lamb than I do about Richardson. Yes, one's a QB, and one's probably going to have higher average, but I don't know if I'm really, really reaching for it. So I, I do tend if I'm in if I'm early, which obviously, we have a ton of teams here, we're gonna be early. So, obviously, I'm gonna try to pick a QB first. If that doesn't fall to me, then I'm I'm going position player, and I'm going position player quickly. Right. I think it's important in a two quarterback league, even more so than a one quarterback league, is to just take what the board gives you. Yep. Yes, you would love to have a very high end quarterback, a top six quarterback. But if you're the sixth pick, five quarterbacks go and you're staring at Christian McCaffrey, maybe you just want to go McCaffrey. And I don't think you're yep. wrong for doing that. A lot of analysts will tell you that you want to have two quarterbacks by the end of the first three rounds. I don't see that at all. I don't see that that's the way. I've done very well in leagues with bad quarterbacks. I've done very bad in leagues with good quarterbacks. Two quarterback, more than anything, there is no proven strategy. That's why I think it's the most fun to play. It's just you and your knowledge of football and seeing if you can outsmart your opponents. All right, Sam, let's not waste any more time on this. Sam is going to be the even number teams in red. I am going to be the odd number teams in blue. That gives me the first overall pick. And with the first overall pick, I will take my QB1, Patrick Mahomes. I think Patrick is in for a bounce back year this season. I think it's going to be sweet. I think he is going to be something special back to being his former self. Sam, your pick. The board actually is not going to like what I have here. Um, but I'm going to go Lamar Jackson. Okay. I To me, I have less questions. I certainly have less questions about Lamar Jackson um is as compared to <laughs> what am i doing you uh, it the sharing screen doesn't help anything you might have to copy it paste it and then yeah that's what that i'm doing now. Yeah. <laughs> all right uh certainly more less questions about lamar jackson than i do jalen hurts uh it's it is really close between josh allen and lamar jackson i know derrick henry might take a few goal line touches away uh from lamar jackson's rushing upside but it is a dime a dozen between these top three guys and uh, I think I just like the upside of Lamar Jackson a little bit more here. Totally fair. Lamar Jackson should be on a revenge tour this year. Yes, and that's kind of what I'm looking at. Yeah. Uh, I will take Josh Allen 
here who big debate one or two josh allen mahomes josh allen i just don't trust his weapons but yes i still think he's the second best quarterback this year so not a knock i'd just rather have mahomes for a bounce back season yep sam your pick this is right where i would want to take jalen hurts this is this is precisely where i think jalen hurts belongs he is in my opinion the fourth best fantasy quarterback and this is i i'm very happy with this right here going smooth so far Absolutely. Those are the top four quarterbacks. Those should be the top four picks in whatever order you think in a two quarterback league. Mm -hmm. All right, Sam, pick five. This is where I go Christian McCaffrey. Those top four are off the board. I pivot for a couple of picks here into position players. Give me Christian McCaffrey, best running back in the league. Yes, concerns about him staying healthy this year. I do have him, but if he hits, he's going to hit and be worth this pick. That's a little upsetting. I was hoping you would snag a quarterback. I was hoping you would snag one of these uh, kind of second to one and a half tier guys so that I could snag me some McCaffrey. But I do agree. This is where you go off them, and I, I go C.D. Lamb here uh, for the same reason you just said. There's a lot of high-level receivers, but I really do think uh, there's going to be a gap between C.D. Lamb and as wide receiver one and whoever we have as wide receiver two. I think it's going to be sizable. There's not a whole lot of other bodies in that Dallas receiver room. Uh, I, lo- I love what C.D. Lamb is going to bring this year, for sure. Yeah, totally fair. Absolutely fair. By the way, we are going half PPR here for the audience. Me and Sam knew that. I forgot to say that at the start. We are going half PPR in this draft. It continues to be dicey. Quarterback or position player? I go position player again here at pick seven. I will mm-hmm. take Bijan Robinson. I think he's in for a huge year. I will take Bijan at seven. Sam, move your cursor so it shows C.D. Lamb. Yep. Oh, there we there go. go. <laughs> All right. Uh, see, this is where I think uh, I'm going back to quarterback. At pick eight, uh, with guys that are up there, I think I actually might go and snag a guy that I feel really, really good about this year. Um, it's between him or his running mate, really. Um, and his running mate's a really good option here as well. So I am a little annoyed by how close it is, but I think I'm going to go Joe Burrow here. Okay. I think Joe Burrow is a sneaky MVP favorite. I think Joe Burrow's is, uh, the Bengals are a sneaky Super Bowl team out of the AFC. I like him this year. I think Joe Burrow's feeling something type of way. I've loved watching his interviews this offseason. I love white-haired Joe Burrow. That's getting me. That's getting me excited. Um, it was between him or Jamar Chase here. Honestly, I don't think you can go super wrong here. Having Joe Burrow as your QB1 at pick eight, I don't hate it. Okay. As a Bengals fan, I hope you're right. I'm a little concerned about that wrist injury. I really hope he's okay. It's a little concerning, but I think he'll be all right. Certainly banking on it. (laughs) Yeah, very much. Very much hope so. He's looked Uh, all right. At pick nine... uh, I'm going to take the last of the stud three running backs. That's kind of where this tier ends for me and now i'm going to start pivoting over back to quarterbacks but i got to get those top three running backs off the board at five seven and nine here yeah you gotta get these guys off the board now that's right yeah if i thought i had b john robbins sorry yep take them off i was like you idiot why'd you take burrow when b john was on the board uh yeah this is tyreek hill territory right here perfect yep yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. Uh, pick 11 after Tyreek is off the board. This is where I definitely go back to quarterback. I will take Anthony Richardson with the upside. I know the downsides. He's going to be sporadic. He's going to be scary to watch on a could-get-injured basis. But if this guy hits, he's a league winner, especially yeah. in a two-quarterback league. Look for Team 11 to take an extra quarterback or two later to help cover me from this but the upside's there for Anthony Richardson. I agree. I absolutely agree. Uh, He's a guy that we've talked about a lot um, in past episodes, and it's really gone up and down with us. From a football fan standpoint, there's a lot of questions from a fantasy standpoint. I think he's going to be a blast. You're exactly right. At at least he is a beautiful QB2 to have, and you know, taking that at this point, it's not too bad. If he can get another really good guy behind him, uh, I think Anthony Richardson is prime guy to take, uh, knowing that you're going to have a quarterback right after, maybe a snake draft type of situation. 
Uh, and this is this is Jordan Love territory easily. Okay. Uh, I, I think this one kind of. I think we're back to the picks really explaining themselves pretty easily here. Uh, definitely Richardson, Love, guys that you're going to add on the back end of the first round once the you know elite of the elite position players in the elite in the elite tier one quarterbacks are taken. You take the top guys in tier two. Richardson and Love, I think, are those guys. Yeah. At the back, Sam, you got another pick here at 12. Let's see what you do with back-to-back picks. So that's exactly what I want to do. With Love, With I think I go another quarterback. This team I'm really intrigued with. I really like it. You wonder if there's going to be a run, but if you can get two guys there. Now that I'm saying this, though, I'm looking at the list that I had. I did my homework, and that's not what I had. Hold on. Hold on. I know I remember what we were gonna do. We're getting the we're getting the lineup here. This is where Amon Ross and Brown comes into me. Okay. In for me. God, we gotta cut that out. That's gonna be blasted. No, we're keeping that. That's gonna be staying no! right there. <laughs> oh god, there's there's no redeeming on that one. <laughs> right. Does I, I'm not I don't have the jet pulled up too, so my focus face is not something I'm looking at right now. It takes a lot for me to cut and paste. Yeah. Uh, okay. Beautiful right here. High, high volume. He's going to be outstanding in PPR. Uh, we've talked about the risk. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot to go around, but I think you brought it up. You don't know who with Kincaid, uh, with Jameer Gibbs, all being kind of top of their position. Where is there enough to go around? I think Amon Ross St. Brown is the reason that those guys are not, going to live up to their ADP right now. I think he's going to absolutely be outstanding. Fair enough. At the back end of the first round into round two, I love the double dip. So if you're in quarterback heavy draft, maybe you get Bijan and Brees Hall. Maybe you get Tyreek Hill and CeeDee Lamb if you're QB heavy. But if you're a little QB light like we are here, I will mm-hmm. gladly take C.J. Stroud to pair with Anthony Richardson yeah. in Team 11. And that covers my butt. I'll have to find some sleepers later. But I do love that start, and I'm surprised you didn't do the same at pick 12. In, in hindsight, I, in, like, honestly, I really should have. Uh, but you go down you go down into this list. I see Dak Prescott at 18. Uh, I see Kirk Cousins at 20. I see guys that are viable QB2s. Uh, maybe they're not winning you some leagues. But having an elite, elite wide receiver, uh, as opposed to going into the season and saying, okay, Chris Olave, you're my number one, there is a different feel there. You know how I feel about Chris Olave. Uh, but there, there's going to be a different feel there, or a guy like Debo Samuel, or a guy like DJ Moore. You kind of want to, if you're picking on the back end of the first round, and you have a quarterback like Love, which we both love Jordan Love in this round. I, I kind of like the round, but you can't go wrong. You're exactly right. Double dipping on the QB is beautiful here. Yep. Sam, your pick, pick 10, team 10, pick two. Uh, there's not a ton that I love here. This is where I do think I'm going to jump in and uh, grab me a QB. And I think I'm going to take a little risk. It's Actually, it's not a little risk because there are rankings. and We both love this guy, but I'm going Kyler Murray here. Yeah, by the way, these are Garbage Time Sports' official rankings. Not necessarily me and Sam individually, but kind of combined. This is kind of where we came out. You can purchase these rankings for 5 bucks on our Patreon if you hate how we sound right now and we're trying to get some better equipment, but obviously we're all broke, buy some stuff on Patreon and help us get some new equipment. I might cut that out. That sounded a little beggy. I didn't like that at all, Sam. Tough. <laughs> <laughs> Tough. All right. So, Sam, you're going with Kyler. I'm going with Kyler. Uh, I really like the upside here. I think the rushing is going to be back back, too. Like, I really think he's going to be let loose here. And your boy. Marvin Harrison Jr., you've been saying it all year, number seven wide receiver in the league already. Uh, I'm not going to get fully into that conversation, but I'm not going to fight you on it too much either. hes I think he's really, really set. Um, he looked really surprisingly good at the back into last year, and it looks like and it sounds like he's got some fire under him. Kyler Murray with some fire under him. We forget how touted this guy was a couple years ago. That talent is still there. I'm excited for Kyler Murray this year. Yeah, I think Kyler's in for a huge year. I think a lot of people are calling for that. I think you're exactly right. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Team nine here. 
I'm going to go risky. I'm going to have some fun with this one. I'm going to take Jonathan Taylor and just be set at running back. Absolutely yep. loaded. Um, quarterback is risky here. We have Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels. Goff isn't risky, but he's not exactly exciting either because he doesn't yep. run at all. Purdy, Lawrence. I'm going to go with the sure thing and Jonathan Taylor, and I got my RB1 and RB2 totally set, and we'll see how yep. that team fills out later. No, this is this is where the skill positions start really, really going here. Because you're you're at you're at the part of the quarterbacks where you can wait, and you're really stretching the second round for anyone else here. And honestly, if I weren't so high on Kyler Murray, I would be saying that it's a stretch on him in the second already too. The argument can still be made. Sure. After this, it's a big stretch. Uh, Taylor's a good pick here. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna grab me a little duo here. Bye week's gonna be tough, but Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase. I love this. I love pairing this up. So put it in my veins. This was, I was debating taking Jamar Chase at this point. This is a huge bank on what you were saying. Sure hope Burrow's wrist is okay. Because if it's not, I this team is in trouble. But it's the beauty of drafting six teams, Joey. We somewhat get to experiment a little bit. Have a little bit of fun. Maybe we pay a nerd to... Calculate all these scores for us <laughs> for us at the end of the year, and we'll see how we do. It'll <laughs> probably be one of us, but Sam, I, I think you're right. I think we should keep track of this. Just check this, total points at the end of the year. I, I'd be intrigued, for sure. Yeah, we'll best ball this one. Actually, yeah. that might, that's not a bad idea. Anyways, moving on here. <laughs> we'll Sam, work move your cursor so that it shows Jamar Chase. There it is. All right, Team 7 has Bijan Robinson. See, this is where it gets tough. Like, this mm-hmm. is where it gets tough. You don't want to get stuck without a quarterback. Yep. But there's just such good value everywhere else. I will go I, ahead you, and take... You want four quarterbacks go, though. I will take Justin Jefferson to pair with Bijan here. See, that's and really we good will, pick, again, though. risk it and see what happens at quarterback. But this team yep. at least has a running back and receiver where last team was running back, running back. We'll see what happens. Yeah. No, I really like that. I really do. I think that's a beautiful pick. Uh, get him off my board, though, because even as you just picked him, I saw him and it was like, ooh, Justin Jefferson. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sorry, my bad, my bad. Zero time for me <laughs> to be like, all right, pick Justin Jefferson. Ooh, Jefferson's available. Um, <laughs> I'm an idiot. Uh, I think I'm going Saquon here. Uh, CD Lamb, again, I'm kind of following what you're doing. I, I think the value for C.D. Lamb is so high that I'm actually really all right taking a one-and-a-half to second-tier running back here. I think Saquon's going to be beautiful in the goal line. Um, if I see one uh, Philly push on the goal line, though, that's the thing I'm most scared of, is that's going to take some goal line touches away from him. That's going to be frustrating, but I like this pick. I like, I like Lamb. I like Barkley. This can be an interesting team. Provided there's not a massive run on QB, and this team is stuck with Aaron, Aaron Rodgers. Saquon is absolutely talented. He's going to be behind his best offensive line he has ever yep. had, but I just don't love running backs changing teams later in their career. Go I ahead. don't either. I don't I, either. I get the hype on paper. I get it. Obviously, he was RB5 for us, so I get it. With C.D. Lamb, there's a little bit of wiggle room here. Uh, obviously, it's a two QB league, so not as much as you would like, but there's a little bit here. Right. Uh, this fifth team, this is kind of where the interesting give and take comes along. Um, I've, I'm going to go with Garrett Wilson here. Mm. I'm going to go ahead and double dip again without a quarterback. And Sam, I think this is a good place to pause because let's just take a look at this board. You are trying to punish your opponents for what they do. All right, so these first four teams all took quarterbacks, and then you had a run of skill position players. And then at the end, you had three or four, five more quarterbacks go at the back end. So they go front and end go quarterback. The middle go skill position heavy. So what should happen here at one, two, three, and four? They should probably go quarterback again and punish the middle. That's exactly what I was about to try and do, and I'm annoyed that you said it because I'm hoping that maybe you sat there and looked at Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes and said, we don't need a quarterback. 
But that's exactly what I was looking at doing. And I'm annoyed that you brought it up. I don't know if I'm going to go one of these rookies just yet. I'm going to go, though, with a guy that I am really, really, really excited about. And who is a dark horse, a very dark horse, albeit MVP guy for me. But I'm going Trevor Lawrence here on the next one. Maybe that's not. Maybe that's a little bit of a stretch in this current situation. Uh, maybe that's not, you know, the tank you wanted. But I think if you're looking at two rookies and two, let's be honest, somewhat system quarterbacks, Trevor Lawrence is the guy with the most raw and visible talent there. And if it pops, it's going to be the biggest upside of all f- of all five of those guys that we saw um, from ten to 15, from ten to fourteen right there. Absolutely fair. Trevor Lawrence could be in for a huge year. We'll see if he lives up to that contract at all. Exactly. I will gladly take the upside of Josh Allen to pair with the upside of Caleb Williams and just see if I hit. And if Caleb Williams hits, this league might be over. Yeah. No. One hundred percent. Yeah. That's just yeah. the way it is. Yep. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing here with Jaden Daniels. Fair. Uh, the Dotson trade is a little concerning. That was sad. I was that really was happy. Sad. Uh, but he still got guys. And I'm, I'm a fan of this team. I'm just a fan of him in general. I like, as a Cowboys fan, I'm kind of been keeping an eye on, you know, the commander's camp because they're a team that I think is going to be scarier than people are talking about. He's looked good. And I mean, like, like Aaron, Aaron Rodgers arm action type good. And that's, that's a little frightening. I don't love that. I don't love mobile quarterbacks that can zip it at weird angles. They tend to kill the Cowboys and I don't want one of them in our division. He could be a lot of fun to watch at the very least. I could see some serious upside here. Yeah. Jaden, Jaden, Jaden Daniels has looked super fun. Him and Caleb Williams are going to be very entertaining to watch, yep. both in the NFC. Nice to have the NFC get some of these stud young quarterbacks because yeah. they're all in the AFC. Yeah. All right. He's going to so, be So that was Sam's pick at two. At number one, I will take Jared Goff to pair with Patrick Mahomes. Weapons galore. Goff yep. doesn't have a ton of upside. Sam, move your cursor so people can see. Goff doesn't have a ton of upside because he can't run, but he's going to be very, very steady. Amon Ross St. Brown, Laporta, Gibbs, Montgomery, Jameson Williams is in for a huge year. Goff is going to be very good. And then I love that he's still here. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe this start. If I'm team one, I will take Maserati Marv, Marvin Harrison Jr. as my first skill position player. Four team one. Sam, back yeah. to you at two. That's gross. That's that's very gross. Uh, I need a running back. I desperately need a running back here. And uh, I think I'm going to take Jameer Gibbs away from you. I don't want that adding up with any of these teams. I, l- I really like the pass catching ability here. Um, and again, I know we talked all about Amon Ross St. Brown. And how Amon Ross St. Brown really might hurt some of the upside of his teammates. But at this point, second pick in round three, this is Jameer Gibbs territory for me for sure. Um, any further, I risk losing him. Uh, any earlier, I do think it's a little bit of a reach. Totally fair. Totally fair. Team three. Um... I mean, A.J. Brown is the pick here. We're actually a little lower on A.J. Brown than consensus, Sam. There's about two or three wide receivers that we drafted ahead of where A.J. Brown goes in a lot of drafts. We both love Devontae Smith. We think the Eagles' overall offense just may be a little more spread out to where it's not so concentrated on A.J. Brown. But just knowing what everybody thinks of Brown, he's kind of in a tier by himself right here. He's kind of the stopgap between the next tier of players and what we just drafted. So I like A.J. Brown here. And uh, Team 1 and 3, that's a very familiar build if you're used to two quarterback leagues. That That's, that's, this is a lot how, that's a, how a lot of teams start. Yep. Um, this is exactly what I was hoping would happen. Uh, when I took Gibbs to the last one, I was really hoping you didn't snag a running, uh, a running back. The next one would have been Etienne. And I really wanted to pair him with his teammate. With Lawrence, he's going to be Lawrence's best weapon this year. Um, I know Christian Kirk is in there. Christian Kirk is a really good wide receiver, a great wide receiver too, a pretty good wide receiver one, an all right wide receiver one. Um, 
this is his best weapon, and I think it, he is going to be used incessantly. He's had a healthy camp. I think that's huge for him. Uh, I really think he's going to start off hot, and I think he's going to be really, really nice throughout the rest of the season. Right. Absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. So we're back to this middle part, which is the interesting yep. part of this draft. What do these guys do, right? What are these guys going to do? Do they feel like they can get greedy and grab another skill position player because everybody else is kind of already set at quarterback? Yep. Or do you feel the pressure of having to make sure you get one of these top 20-ish type guys when you're in this position? Some of these teams should take it. Some of these teams should take a quarterback now. Some of these should wait. Yes. Team five, I'm going to have this team take a quarterback. Highest rated quarterback for me is Brock Purdy. Um, there's an obvious tear break after Jared Goff, if you ask me. Mm-hmm. But Brock Purdy, you just looked up last year. Every game, it seems like he threw for two touchdowns and was top yep. eight quarterback that week. It's not pretty. It's not sexy. It's not what you want to do. But the guy produces, and I don't know if it's because of him or his team, but in fantasy football, it doesn't matter. 49ers, I would be worried if I had to pay him $55 million. But as a fantasy owner, he's going to be just fine for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, In the name of QBs who are being paid too much, uh, this is also a team that needs a quarterback. Uh, This is a stretch for QB1. I don't think he's a QB1 if you have a perfect draft. Uh, Team 6 doesn't have a perfect draft right now, but Team 6 will be all right. This is Tua territory for me here. I don't love how much they're paying him. You know I've talked about this, but uh, you got to go quarterback on on a team like this. uh, It's it's a big-time Tier 1 position guy and a Tier 2 two maybe tier one and a half guy and it's a guy with legitimate questions historical questions i'd say not questions on saquon himself but his type an aging running back who's moving teams like you said earlier you got to go quarterback you got to go guy with high ceiling absolutely 100 percent agree team seven sam move your cursor son of a gun Team seven is going to go Matt Stafford. They're going to go ahead and grab a quarterback oh, a as well. Quarterback. <laughs> There's the run on quarterback. So we did end up, these three teams here got chicken. They felt like they had to take a quarterback. I don't think that's technically the wrong decision either. No. This, and here's a, this I'm is why two quarterback leagues are fun. We had, I have Stafford a little higher on this. Sure. Uh, I think Stafford, honestly, I should have gone with my gut. And gone Stafford over to, uh, I think the season will play out a little bit, provided he's healthy. Um, yeah, I, I, I like Stafford a lot on this, especially on that team. That's pretty. Yeah, totally fair. Mm-hmm. Sam, Team 8, the Cincinnati Bengals are on the clock. Yeah, yeah so Team eight's an interesting one, because they can kind of go wherever they want. Uh, they have the maneuverability. They could really mess some teams up and grab their quarterback, too. Uh, that could be pretty gross. They they do need a running back, though, but you look at the guys. Pacheco's the top guy, then Jacobs. You really don't want to fall much further than Derrick Henry here. And so there's a chance you get cold feet a little bit, and you go with a running back. I don't love anyone there, though. So I'm going to take... Oof. Oof, the more I'm talking about this, the more it gets worse. I'm going to take the best player that I think is still on the board, and I'm going Chris Olave. Chris Olave, fair enough. Yeah. I think he is the best player still on this board right now. I like the pairing. If uh, if Burrow's wrist goes is poor, um, Jamar Chase's value may not be where you want. Uh, Chris Olave's value will hold firm. All right, he'll be all right. I don't care who his quarterback is. He's shown he is a poor. He is a bad quarterback proof wide receiver. Receiving core stack now on Team 8. Yeah, love, love Chris Olave, Ohio State Buckeye fan. He's probably yeah. my favorite Buckeye ever. He's so much fun to watch. Yeah. He's love cool. him. Spencer Radler, Saints backup QB. Watch out, Derek Carr. He's coming <laughs> for you. Team mm-hmm. 9. Now, Team 9 here, they went running back, running back. The run on quarterback happened, so they're yep. going to triple dip on skill position. 
Ooh. I am a I am a Cooper Cup believer over Puka Nakua. Puka Nakua is dealing with an injury while Cooper Cup's healthy. The exact opposite of what was happening last off season. I think Cooper Cup has one more fantastic year in him. Cooper Cup's my wide receiver ten. Give me Cooper Cup with team nine, tenth wide receiver off the board. Yeah. Uh, team ten's gonna mess some people up here. Team ten's going quarterback. Okay. Uh, we're going Justin Herbert here. And okay. Team 10 is looking pretty nasty, I think. I like what we've got going here. Top-tier guy, and then two quarterbacks that, fantasy-wise, we really like. You know my feelings on Justin Herbert. Fine, fine quarterback. Put up fantasy numbers, no problem. Uh, I like this. I like this a lot. I think this is where Team 10 needed to be. Yeah, and- people- People, and are sh- people are shy on Justin Herbert this year because Jim Harbaugh runs such a run-heavy offense. But, guys, this is still the NFL. It's not yep. like the Chargers are going to come out and be the Navy midshipmen and literally throw the ball six times a game. Like, they're go- still going to throw the ball 50% of the time, at least, because it's the NFL, and that's the game. Yep. All right, Team 11 here. Team 11, two quarterback. They need to go best player available. Mm-hmm. Um i think that t- i think puka nakua is in the tier here before there's a little bit of a break i will take puka nakua for team 11 w- with that quarterback quarterback start yep i i think that's a really good i think that's a really good play there uh knowing puka that nu- i'm knowing that i'm going to get a very solid running back even if team 12 goes rbrb here Yes, um, Puka Nakua is a really, really pretty, pretty play there. Really safe on the back end of the third round, too. Like, as safe as it gets. You know he's going to put up baseline good numbers. Um, and if, in the best-case scenario for Puka, not so much anyone else, not so much the NFL even, uh, Cooper Cup gets injured and he is the number one guy in town. Uh, so really, really pretty there. Um... Team 12, I'm going to get a little weird with, if you'll allow me to do so. Please. Uh, team 12 is going to get saucy. We're going to take a little run here. All right. Get Puka off my board. <laughs> that threw me off again. Nope. Whoops. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. This is saucy at all. I just talked about him. I'm an idiot. I'm going Sam Laporta. No, I'm not. <laughs> nope. I'm going Dalton Kincaid here. Okay. Um, I think Dalton Kincaid is the guy that has nobody vying for his numbers. Uh, sorry, not numbers. That was a word that I chose when I was focusing on hitting cut, not copy. Uh, I don't think there's anyone vying for his receptions as much as maybe Laporta. And I'm a little, a little scared of taking Kelsey as the number one tight end. Uh, simply because... I think the age is going to be catching up to him. I really do. He had a he had his worst year in a while last year. Uh, he done. I don't. I think there's a chance he comes out and does not look like the right guy. Plus, Patrick Mahomes actually has maybe not some great weapons, but at least a couple of them uh, more than he's had before. So, I think Kincaid's the go here out of the top three wide receiver uh, tight ends. And at this point in the round, if you have a tight end you love, we both love ourselves some Kincaid. And I think the. Uh, Red zone numbers might be beautiful. I uh, I like Kincaid here. And then the back end, I think we're going to go and grab ourselves some uh, some double dip action here. And I think this team goes and snags a quarterback that I'm obviously going to be higher on. Uh, and mess up a few teams here. Certainly mess up your triple dip team. I'm going Dak Prescott, I think. Start of the fourth round, Dak, Pre- Dak Prescott simply just puts up consistently good fantasy numbers. I know the weapons aren't what they have been in Dallas for a while, uh, but I still think it's going to be all right. Uh, Dalvin Cook is not going to do much. It's come out today. They're they're looking at him, but at least there's weapons and options and something in the backfield. Uh, I feel better about two old guys and maybe Rico Dowdle uh, than... One old guy, and please, Rico Dowd. That sounds a little better to me. Dak Prescott, I think, can still put up some solid numbers. 
Totally fair. That's a great pick. Dak Prescott has obviously always played a lot better than QB 18 in fantasy. Yeah. The, the weapons do scare us, but at this point, that value, I think that's a very smart pick because you're probably not getting a great quarterback coming back at you. Yep. Team 11, two quarterbacks, one wide receiver. I'm going to take best RB available for this yeah. team right now. I'm going to go with Pacheco. The dude runs like he's running from the cops. He tries to punch people in the face. He doesn't stiff arm. He punches you in the face. Reminds me of an old school Marion Barber. Yep. The I was guy just... runs angry, and he is so much fun to watch. Love me some Pacheco. And, yep. uh, yeah, that that team, again, a very classic 2QB build right there for Team 11. Yeah. No, no, no. That's, that is exactly how you draw it up there. I love that. Um and I think I'm going to do a similar build. Obviously, the order's different here. Uh, get him off my board. Get him off I'm the board. <laughs> uh, I'm going to run away a little bit from the veteran running back changing teams. Uh, and I'm going to look at James Cook in Buffalo as my guy for Team 2. We got a top-tier uh, wide receiver and then two quarterbacks that I like in, in terms of fantasy. Solid. Uh, this is a solid team. There's a chance this is the last team in the league. Um, and there's a chance that this team is solidly in the playoffs and of health permitting, they could be a team no one wants to see. I, I, I'm all in on Team 10 right now, though. I love it. I'm stoked. And I like this build here. Yeah, that's fair. So here we are once again with this Team 9, which you don't love what's at quarterback, <laughs> but you kind of feel like you got to take one. But then you also have... Debo Samuel with Brandon Ayuk still not signed. Yeah. Staring you in the face. I, I'm going to stay weird. I'm going to stay weird with this team. We're going to see how it ends up because this, yeah, we're going to see how this one ends up. This is why we are doing this, Sam. Give me Debo yeah. Samuel, our wide receiver 12 going in the fourth round of team nine. Yeah. Um, Team 8's got to get another quarterback if Joe Burrow's not healthy. I mean, you got to. <laughs> and uh, I don't think you're desperate enough, though, to hop on the Aaron Rodgers train. I think you're a little weary of Kirk Cousins. They gave him a big contract, though, so maybe. But you have a little... No, man, you're not doing this. You're not doing this, teammate. Look at what is still there. This is dumb. DJ Moore, welcome to Team 8. Uh, this is... No, that's dumb. Not DJ Moore. I'm looking at Team 6. <laughs> 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 that makes so much more sense. Let me scroll over here. Who do we have? Joe Burrow and... Oh, yeah. Sam Laporta. I'm going to be weird with Team 8 here. Uh, I think at this point, you want production, and you don't much care where it comes from. Uh... You would like a quarterback here, but there's not one that you feel like you aren't stretching for at this point. Uh, Sam Laporta can get you some pretty good numbers here if you're lucky, and I don't think you have to be that lucky. He is tight end number one. If you can get the top of somebody's position, that's not too bad. I don't hate it. I don't love it, to be fair, uh, but it's the team. It's the guy that I deem to be the best available right now. Totally fair. Sam, I have a problem, and I've talked to you about this, and we have a video on this. I don't think tight ends are real. It, mm -hmm. I, I just have such a hard time whenever I'm staring at a top wide, at the top wide receiver running back available, but then like, oh, or you could get a tight end. I just forget. I just forget about tight end. Yeah. I play in big enough and deep enough leagues to where it doesn't really matter, but in this exercise, you snagging a couple of tight ends here just reminded me, like, oh yeah, tight ends exist. And yep. I'm. I never. I never remember that. I like no, the Samuel Ford pick. That's, argument, that's smart. Yeah. There's certainly an argument, but I'm looking down there, and I'm. It's a question of is DJ Moore going to have a better year or is Sam Laporta? And I think I can pass on DJ Moore and take a guy like Devonte Smith and have a difference in points be negligible. But the difference between a Sam Laporta and a Hunter Henry is, I think, going to be pretty dramatic. Or the difference between a Sam Laporta and a Brock Bowers. You know? 
Brock Bowers will certainly be a fine uh, tight end and a guy that I'm certainly hoping I can get on one of these teams here in the later rounds, but I do think there's going to be a pretty stark difference. I think Sam, uh, Sam Laporte is really going to look like a wide receiver two type of numbers, maybe a wide receiver three, and that's not that's not a bad thing to have right now. Yeah, absolutely fair. Sam, Team 7 is on the clock. You mentioned him earlier. You know I'm going to grab him because I love him. DJ Moore, yep. welcome to Team 7. Is there going to be too much of a crowded wide receiver room in Chicago? No, I don't think so. I think DJ Moore is the number one wide receiver there with a bullet. It's really mm-hmm. nice to have a very good number two and number three, Keenan Allen, Roma Dunze. But DJ yeah. Moore is the number one, and I don't think that's a question as much as everybody else does. No, no, I think I think you're exactly right. I think you're exactly right. Um, and that this is prime uh, DJ Moore territory here. And the more I look at this, the more I hate Team Six, and I can't I can't dog it up. Got to make something about it. Because there's there's only re- there's really a smart thing to do, and it's not something I want to do. But I got to get a second quarterback, and I really don't want to take any of the guys who are available. But I'm going to take a guy we both kind of like here. This is a huge risk. I know it. But I'm, I really like Levis. I really like Will Levis. This is a guy we talked about in guys who could, you know, really surprise us this year. We've talked about Will Levis in a couple. I, we might even make a Will Levis ticker, all right, by, by, the time the, uh, by the time the season starts. I think we're both going to have fun with this guy. I don't hate this pick. I don't love this pick either. Um, at this point in the draft, I love Will Levis going for this team. It's a little scary, but we're going with it. It's the smart thing to do right here if you team six. I don't mind the Will Levis, and yeah. that leaves me team five. I think it's a pretty easy decision. If it goes yep. right, it's going to go right. Give me the Aaron Rodgers, Garrett Wilson stack. Yep. If it hits, it's going to hit big, and it's going to be beautiful. If it doesn't, if Aaron Rodgers is off, then Garrett Wilson is going to be off, and this team is dead anyways. So yeah. give me Aaron Rodgers in that stack. Sam, let's start picking it up just a little bit. Let's keep it to one or two sentences instead of three or four every pick. No, for sure. Uh, Derek Henry right here. Uh, let's stock up on running backs because I think the uh, difference in the wide receivers, there's nobody worth really stretching for now. I think they're all kind of in the general same general cluster. Uh, if I, ha- I have a good running back here. I like taking the risk on Henry. Derrick Henry, team four. That leaves me best player available whenever you have two quarterbacks. Best player available is your strategy for the rest of the time. Josh Jacobs for me here at the fourth pick for team three. Sam, you brought up something interesting real quick that I feel like it just needs to be said. This whole tier of wide receivers, this is what we call the group. Apparently... From Drake London all the way down to about uh, uh, Christian Kirk. So, like, 16, 18 guys. Yeah. The difference between those guys and projections is a total of, like, three points. Yeah. So, this is really, like, beauties in the eye of the beholder when we get to those wide receivers. But I'm breaking sure. my own rule of talking too long. Sam, team two. Oh, no, I think that's absolutely worth saying that. That's something that needs to be put out there. Uh, I think this is, again, two quarterbacks. You go best available. And this is where I, I kind of like Travis Kelsey. I like taking a risk on it that maybe he's great, maybe he's not. This guy, if it goes well, can put up wide receiver two numbers for you. Uh, I would like a running back here more, but I don't see one that I like more than Travis Kelsey. So I'm going with it. I was absolutely going to go Mahomes Kelsey stack there. So good yep. pick. And I, the other reason is I wanted to break that up. Yep. Totally fair. Totally fair. Say I'm not our favorite guy, but everybody else's favorite guy. We'll go Kirion Williams with Mahomes and Jared Goff, and then we will grab best wide receiver on the board for us. I'm not totally buying the Drake London hype, but I'm buying it enough to where I think he's going to have a really good year. So Kirion Williams and Drake London for Patrick Mahomes. Marvin Harrison's got a hit, but I like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, um, I'm going to go old reliable here. Uh, Mike Evans, give me a guy that I'm absolutely all right. Uh, he's not going to be a wide receiver one, uh, but I feel good with him as my wide receiver one on this team, especially with the weapons above him. Man, there was there a part of me that wanted to go Kelsey and Matt Andrews and take Kelsey from you and go Matt Andrews 
with Lamar Jackson. Maybe I should have. Maybe I should have. But I like this. Yeah. Um, you can keep Mark Andrews because Team 3, I was going to go with Trey McBride. I really like McBride this year. really liked McBride coming out of Colorado yeah. State. Happy with him finally getting the respect that he deserves. And he's going to be the fifth-round pick for Team 3. Yeah. No, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Um I think I'm going Devontae Adams right here. I think this is something of a steal. Uh, obviously, age is a little worrisome. But, again, say it's the exact same argument with uh, Mike Evans. Old reliable. He's old reliable until he's not. Um, good year last year. I, I think he's going to be all right this year, too. Totally fair. Team 5 has one receiver. I don't like that they only have one receiver. Again, not our favorite, but a lot of people's favorite, Jalen Waddle. Give me Jalen Waddle here for Team Five. I do really like Jalen Waddle, but yeah. If Tyree, not, not if, if Tyree Hill sprains an ankle, misses four games, going to be an absolute stud. If Tua's got to stay healthy. Mike McDaniel's fantastic choreographer of offense. Yep. No. Absolutely. Um. Oh, team Six. What on earth are we looking at here? Do I make it really weird? Do I make it really weird, Joey? It's your team, Sam. It's your team. I know. Team Six is officially my lab rat team. If we get to name them, that's what it's going to be. Mark Andrews, welcome to Team Six. <laughs> Whoa, we're getting weird. All right. I cut out, I cut it out there. Uh, there you go. It's not on it. It's honestly not a bad bad pick here. I think it's still you know fine territory for Mark Andrews. Just the team around him is odd, but this is exactly where you want to be taking him. Middle of the round, fourth, fifth round. I like it. Yeah, totally fair. Bijan, Justin Jefferson, Matthew Stafford, DJ Moore. Let's have fun. I know I have DK Metcalf higher, but let's just have a lot of fun. Take Malik Neighbors, and mm. we have three very explosive wide receivers. Daniel Jones scares the crap out of me. He might be the worst quarterback in the league. Yeah, no, he's awful. I, I think that's going to be really, really bad. I was going to wait for a long time on Malik Neighbors. Uh, but if it goes, it could be really fun to watch. If it goes, it goes. Um, I'm terrified of a lot of things having to do with this team. I like the top two running backs. I'm going to go with a guy that I actually think will be a little bit better. This is a guy I talked about as being a guy that I think is going to be slept on a lot in leagues. Uh, give me Rashad White. I know A-Chain's a guy we've talked about a lot more. Um, I think he's going to be a guy that can surprise a lot of people. Uh, Breaker Mayfield, his running backs tend to do very, very well. Uh, I'd love to be able to give you a serious analytical reason as to why I don't know. I can have guesses, but I'm not going to throw guesses out of here. I like White right here. Yeah, totally fair. I'm going to continue to have some fun with Team 9 here. I know that quarterback is taken care of on every single one of these teams, so I don't need to rush to grab a quarterback. I have two stud running backs. Give me DK Metcalf here, and let's just continue to go absolute studs all across the board for mm -hmm. Team 9, and we'll see how that works out for us. DK Metcalf was a really good pick there and a guy that I was hoping would fall to this team right here. R.I.P. Wish it would. Um, but, man, actually, I really, really like the options available to Team 10 here. Ooh. Sorry, I'm, I'm so quiet. Uh, I think I think I'm going Ayuk. Okay. Uh, I like what I'm looking at here. I like Ayuk as a wide receiver, too. Um, I'm happy with this. Yeah, I think you should be. I think that's solid. Yeah. 11, one wide receiver, one running back. That means they can go anywhere. Mm -hmm. <sighs> but this is this is the tough spot. This is the this is starting to get very tough here on where you're supposed to actually go with all of this. Yep. Um, not going to take tight end. Mm -mm. No, not here. No one worth it. <sighs> I'm going to play it safe right now. We'll see what I do on the back end. I'm going to go Devontae Smith here. Mm -hmm. Huge upside if A.J. Brown ever goes down. 
and I think he's just going to take a step forward, regardless. Yeah, he's of exactly he's who I was hoping. He's exactly who I was hoping would be there. Um, that would have really, really made the team twelve pretty gross. Uh, so that's a shame. But I think there's an easy pick right here for team twelve. Um, and go and grab yourself some uh, a chain. Okay. Totally uh, fair. Thought yeah. About it. Yep. I think this is, if he falls like this, I think that's absolutely what you want here. Um, and he's the white, he's the running back one. Would you like a running back before you take an A-chain? Probably. Uh, but with the talent on this team, I, I do like it. And we, we can get a little weird here. And there's a chance I really mess up some teams. But I'm not going to. Here's what I'm going to count on. I'm going to count on Pickens not getting traded. And being the only guy that can possibly be thrown to in that Pittsburgh offense and getting a massive target share. So I'm going to go A chain and Pickens here um, and be a very, very spread out team with two solid quarterbacks that I like here. I fully expected you to take T. Higgins, so I had every intention of taking Kenneth Walker here. But since mm -hmm. Higgins is still there, I will grab Higgins for Team 11. We'll see you if Jamar know, Chase can stay healthy after sitting out all offseason. You know I was hoping that Higgins was going to go to Team 8 and join up with Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase and my Bengals fantasy team, all right? You know I was hoping that would happen. Yep. Uh, but you're right. That's that's the pick there. Um, and I do think the second pick is a guy who really hasn't had a good quarterback his entire career. Uh, this is going to be a great flex. And I... I'm really, really happy he's still here. And uh, I'm taking Terry McLaurin. Okay. Down the rankings a little bit, but I understand yeah, rankings a little bit, But I think he's, I think he should be higher. It's the first time he's had a legitimate quarterback. And Dotson j did just get traded. I don't know how much Dotson was going to take from him. But I like this. Okay. Totally fair. Fair enough. Team nine. This was the team that has all skill position players. Guess who's still there? All reliable. Give me Kirk Cousins as QB one here. I think that is a solid, solid best case scenario for what how for what and how this team turned into. Kirk Cousins, exact same stats as Dak Prescott whenever they're both healthy and on it. I'll take yep. it. No, very good. Uh, I was hoping Kirk Cousins would stay. Because this team does need a second wide, uh, second quarterback. Um, I did debate taking Kirk Cousins with a team that already had two quarterbacks just to mess everyone else up. But Geno Smith is the pick here. Uh, Joe Burrow, Geno Smith, not too bad. Um, I'm liking this. I'm, I'm all right, Geno Smith in this spot. Yeah, Geno Smith right there. Team seven. They have Bijan. Three really nice wide receivers. Stafford's a little injury prone. I'm going to protect myself a little bit. And Sam here, I'm going to shoot for the upside with Bo Nix in Sean Payton's offense over what I know Baker Mayfield, Daniel Jones, Sam Darnold. I know what those guys are. Bo Nix, there's at least a chance he's more than what I think, but there's yep. a chance he's the worst one of the bunch. Give me Bo Nix here. Yeah, no, I, I think I think that's true. I, I think you you highlighted it pretty well there. Um, this is Kenneth Walker territory. Okay. Yeah, this, I've I mean, made this it in the past three teams. Yeah, same, same. Uh, this is him, and I, I like it here, especially uh, needing needing a running back after Saquon. Running back two, Kenneth Walker. I'm I'm happy with that. Yep, Team 5, Christian McCaffrey, Garrett Wilson, Jalen Waddle, two receivers, got a running back. Alvin Kamara, no thank you. I will take Mr. Pittman. Take him. To fill <laughs> out that team. We all know Sam Stevenson hates Michael Pittman, does not think he's any good at all. Half PPR, I think he's going to be solid. I'll put him right there, fine by me. I'll say that solid is a good word. For solid. Yeah, okay very is actually what I'd say. Okay. Very good floor for Michael Pittman. Eh. Okay. I'd love Pittman in my flex. I'd hate Pittman as a one or a two. He's a three. He's a three for that team. Sure. Hey, is he? Yep. Yeah, wide I, receiver three. 
I forgot Garrett Wilson was up there. Yep. yep, yep. And that's that's where I would want him. You're exactly right. <laughs> I just saw a name, and boy, did things get weird in my head. Uh, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> oh, but man, did I want to. Let the record show. Um, this team needs another pass catcher. Oh, man. I think I think there's a guy that I run down and no I don't. No, I take I take highest available and also it's a guy that we talked about. I think he's the best guy in this running back room. I'm going Tank Dell. Tank Dell very solid. As I took Pittman, I said as I took Pittman, I said, "Man, we should probably adjust our rankings and put Tank Dell above Pittman." But yep. just yep. what I was thinking as we went along here. All right. Yeah. Team three has a running back, has a tight end, only one wide receiver. I will. Um, the top three wide receivers available all have question marks. Yes. But I will take the projected number one target of Patrick Mahomes. That's not a bad place to be. Fastest guy in the league. 119, 119 miles. miles. <laughs> that's insane. That's really fast. Crazy. Don't know how he gets there. Fast, you may even say. Almost illegal, some might say. Some. Some. Um, suspension. None. <laughs> no, nothing. Because he's Patrick Mahomes' friend. I'm a friend of Patrick Mahomes, officer. Don't you know I can do what I want? Enough, enough. Uh, we don't need that. Uh, Alvin Kamara. <laughs> Smile for the Kamara. Yep. Uh, it, it's a risk. Um, especially a risk for a team that has now picked Travis Kelsey and Mike Evans and now Alvin Kamara with the last three picks. Um, Father Time could do a number on this team. But I'm going to take my chances. Who else is getting the ball other than Olave and Kamara in New Orleans? All right, this is a number two weapon. Uh, I don't know what it looks like, but in half PPR, at least you can count on a little bit of a floor there. Yeah, totally fair. Sam, I'm going to have some fun here. I don't know if this is smart, but this is definitely fun. I will take both Nico Collins and Stefan Diggs. See, with that's, this team. That's really annoying. Because I, I was hoping go- one of those guys fell to my Tank Dell team. Marvin Harrison Jr., Drake London, Nico Collins as my three receivers, and then Stefan Diggs in my flex. I'm guaranteed Nico or Diggs. One of them is going to be very, very good each week. Mm-hmm. And yeah. maybe the other one flames out each week, and we might have to find a replacement eventually. But. I don't hate that, and I don't hate the value. No, that could end up being an absolutely infuriating lineup. Um, But it could also end up being really, really nice. You know, I I, I could see something pretty good there. It's it's called having the security blanket of Patrick Mahomes. Yep, exactly. Um, Ooh. I'm now thinking of my other teams and what I want from there, but I don't think this guy... I'd love this for Team 6. I'm going to trust that what I think is going to happen is not going to happen. Or what I'm scared is going to happen is not going to happen. And let me look at what else this team needs. This team needs another wide receiver. Could use another running back, too. I don't like Connor, and I don't like Montgomery. I'm going Zamir White. Uh, and I'll be honest, the reasons why are out of necessity and the fact that, again, this is kind of where Zamir White needs to be going here, uh, if not a little bit lower. Hopefully you have your running backs locked up by the beginning of round eight, but if you don't, this isn't a bad play. Yep, totally fair. Team three only has two wide receivers. That concerns me in this format. I'm going to go the safer route, and I'm going to take Christian Kirk here to go to go along with Rice and to go along with uh, go along with AJ Brown. I'm going to take the safest one of these three or four wide receivers here and go with Christian Kirk. I'm genu- I'm genuinely distraught by that. I want you know I love the pairings. I try to go with a good pairing with a quarterback and a receiver, quarterback, running back as much as I can. I was praying for Christian Kirk to go to Trevor Lawrence over there in Team 4. That bothers me. That hits my soul. 
and makes me cry like a little baby at night. Um, but I'm going to going to go with another pairing here. Uh, I'm going to go Evan Ingram and see if I can't get what I hope is uh, Lawrence's. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I'm trying to hit buttons and talk at the same time. Uh, red zone target. And, you know, now somewhat of a tight end territory. I think he's one of the better guys available here. And I think the fact that he's pairing with my quarterback here does put him above uh, Kittle and Pitts just a little bit. Yeah, totally fair. There I go again, forgetting the tight ends existed. Wasn't even looking at tight ends for a lot of these teams. Two wide receivers, one running back here. Ugh, just, I, I kind of hate everything right now. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what I'm looking at with Team 6. With, with <laughs> oh, somebody in your draft is going to do this, so I'm going to have Team 5 mimic this just to be realistic. Team 5 takes Baker Mayfield because they're scared about Aaron Rodgers' health. Yeah. Somebody's exactly. going to take three quarterbacks kind of early. I'm just mm-hmm. going to mimic that here, and I'm going to go with that. Um, I'm going to take something that I have somewhat of a gut feeling about. I'm going to hope that Bryce Young lives up slightly, slightly more than he did last year to a number one overall pick. And not going to take him, but I'm going to take his number one weapon here. Uh, I'm going to see if Deontay Johnson can't grab himself a decent amount of receptions, give himself a solid floor, and be a touchdown-heavy guy, or at least a touchdown-dependent guy. Um, He's not going to win me any leagues, but I do think he can be pretty steady. We know he's a talented receiver, so let's see what he can do if he's a number one. Sure. Team 7, this is where I'm going to go with Amari Cooper. Um, Deshaun Watson scares me, but Jameis Winston, their backup, does not. Really hoping Jameis Winston starts the season for the Browns or eventually takes that job for Amari Cooper's sake. Yeah, no, I don't think that's terrible. Um, Winston, Winston's an interception machine, but he drives the ball down the field, and his receivers love him. Yeah. Uh, for teammate, I'm looking for my flex. Uh, and it's between a couple guys here, but I want to grab... Oof. Hold on. Where did I take the other guy? We can cut this out if we want to. Where did Gibbs go? Gibbs went to team... I know I two. have him. Team two, third He's round. He's over there, son of a gun. All right. Man, there's not a whole lot of beautiful options here. You need to go with flex here. Uh, you got to go best available. The guy who you think is going to get you the most points... Uh, at this point, I do think that's Zay Flowers. Um, you could go one of these tight ends if you wanted to. I think Zay Flowers is a little less scary. Uh, give me Flowers. Yep. Team 9 is absolutely pissed that somebody has taken three quarterbacks at this point. There probably <laughs> is going there probably is going to be more than one team that's taken three quarterbacks at this point in your actual yeah. draft. They get a little scared. They get a little hesitant. They grab Sam Darnold. They say at least that he has fantastic weapons, and we'll see Mm -hmm. if that can make Sam Darnold at least okay in the fantasy realm. Yeah. Not too bad. Not too bad. Um, I have to mimic what I think will actually exist in a league. This team's looking at it saying, okay, we got three pretty – we got some pretty fine wide receivers here in Tyreek Hill – Brandon Ayuk, Terry McLaurin. Uh, you're looking down, and you see guys like Aaron Jones. You see Joe Mixon, DeAndre Swift. You see some actual somewhat viable running backs. There's got to be a guy who's a jerk and who snatches up a quarterback here. I'm going to take Bryce Young on this team and say he's going to be their third, third quarterback just to really foil some of the plans of a team like Team 7. I think these guys are going to exist absolutely in your league. Guys that just draft to piss off their friend. There's, think, always, there's always a guy. There's always a guy there. I don't think it's a bad play here either. Lock up your backup. Um, if one of these guys flames or one of these guys gets injured, which Murray can tend to do, not a bad, not a bad backup plan here. 
Not a bad backup plan. Totally fair. Team 11, three wide receivers, two quarterbacks. They have a running back, and they're going to go ahead and grab another one too. James Conner, when healthy, if healthy, is still always very good. Um, and a lot of people think this is the year he's going to break down, but I got my three wide receivers. I'm, I'm going to keep rolling. These court, it's, My team is reliant on the quarterbacks or not, so whatever else I do, let's go with the high upside of James Conner. Yeah, I don't think that's terrible. Um, I don't think that's terrible at all. Sam, Team... let's make this the last pick of the night, and we will recap what we did, and maybe throughout the day tomorrow we'll draft it and talk about it tomorrow night, What some deep sleepers and stuff. Yeah, let's do it. Um, Team 12 is going to take a chance on Najee Harris as the number two running back. Najee Harris in a contract year. They did not pick up his fifth-year option. Uh, so let's see if he runs with a little bit of fire in his belly. Uh, let's see if he looks somewhat like rookie year Najee, uh, Najee Harris. It could be it, it could be really, really nice at the very least. I think there's some goal line play here. Fair. Totally, totally fair. All right. Sam, move your cursor so that everybody can see this. Sam, take a look around. Uh, your favorite team and your least favorite team. Let's just My take a look favorite. here. I know my least favorite team. It's Team 6. Okay, Sam, what went wrong with Team 6? Saquon Barkley, number 2. Didn't have a ton of options there. You would have loved a uh, one of the quarterbacks to go with number 2, but it didn't make a ton of sense. Team 6 was in a tough spot. Uh, now, it was saved a little bit by the time Levis and Andrews and Walker came by, so I do think they're up there. Um, they're just the team I feel the worst about. Okay, fair. Um, I think my least favorite team, gosh. Sam, I kind of like these teams. I I, I do. Like, I, 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 honestly, I really do. I kind of like all of these teams. I was about to say team one, though, just because there's a lot of risk there. Marvin Harrison Jr., a rookie, wide receiver yeah. one. That's a lot of risk. Kieran Williams, Williams, is he Warren. going to do that again? He has Blake Warren. Corum behind him. That scares me. I think it was a lot of Sean McVay, not necessarily Williams. Drake London, we're hoping he has a breakout year, but we've never actually seen him do it. And then mm -hmm. Nico Collins and Stephon Diggs. That's kind of a weird pairing. High upside, but kind of weird. Yep. Yeah. Sam, your favorite team. I do want to say, while we're talking about it, team two – Gives me a pit in my stomach with Travis Kelsey, Mike Evans, and Alvin Kamara. Sure. Great names, good players, but they're all pretty old. My favorite team, I really like Team 10. Uh, I like the Tyreek Hill and then Justin Her uh, Kyler Murray and Justin Herbert right behind him. James Cook, solid running back. And then two really, really good wide receivers getting that wide receiver two in the flex taken care of. And then you got... Some security blanket quarterback action in Bryce Young. I really, really like Team 10. Um, team 8, somewhat in the running there. Uh, there is that risk, obviously. But Team 10 is the guy that really sticks out to me. Either them or Team 4. Yeah, I got a couple of teams here. My most on-brand team for what I usually do in these two quarterback drafts is Team 7. Taking yeah. two stud skills players, but then getting like the 12th, 13th, 14th best quarterback is kind of where I land. And then I keep going and find a guy I like late, kind of a sleeper pick. So that's my most on-brand team. But probably my favorite build is Team 11. The upside is absolutely off the charts with this team. But yes. there's also some safety there with C.J. Stroud, with Isaiah Pacheco. That's probably the best team, if I'm being honest, but the most on-brand team for me was Team 7. Team 10 is the most on-brand for me as well. High high skills player pick if you can, and then snatch up your quarterbacks, uh, both higher, low first tier for me, which I somewhat think Murray is, and then high second tier in Herbert. Yeah. So, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this draft. I hope you hear enjoyed hearing the thought process as it goes along obviously we're not the only show that does live drafts on their channel but 
talking about pick by pick, every single pick as you go, that's something that is unique. A lot of people are only talking about the team they're picking as they're drafting with 11 other people, so on and so forth. So I hope this was helpful to you. Again, if you would like to purchase these rankings for five bucks, or you could just pause the screen and copy it down. You just showed it to them. (laughs) Right, yeah, you could just pause the screen and take all of these down. That's totally fine. (laughs) We are not we are not begging here. We are just saying, hey, if you would like to support us, there is a way to do that. All right. It's... Regardless, this was very beneficial to me and Sam as we both prepare for major fantasy football drafts going into Labor Day weekend, as I know all of you are. Hope this was beneficial and I hope you enjoy. It. All right. For all of us here at Garbage Time Sports, have a great night. <laughs>